Hello everyone, Charles Wallingford back again with another watch video. And this video is who purchases a Braemont? What kind of per per person purchases a Braemont? Um, not too long ago, I had a video. I put out a video uh, in, uh, in response to Federico. Yes, I was pronouncing his name wrong. I, I caught myself. I was like, wow, I'm really butchering his name. And he didn't say anything about it. But I'm going to apologize, Federico. I'm sorry for butchering your name. That is not the correct pronunciation of your name that I did in that first video. In that first video, it was a response to his video called Really Braymont. It was where he had uh, was doing, I guess, a little bit of review or I guess a rant on how Braymont charges too much. And it was the the, the uh, watch was the 1960, uh, 1918, the 1918, the 1918 uh, limited edition. And I'm not going to go too deep into that. And I, uh, I, if you really want to see, make sure you watch both videos, one from the Federico video and then the my response video. They usually tie it into each other, so you shouldn't have a problem checking both of those out. I believe I did a good job on that video. I, I believe I did such a good job. Uh, Federico <laughs> didn't want to be outdone, and he left a message on, my, uh, on the comment se section saying that he would like to continue the argument. Uh, and... I was really open to that. I like to have that kind of back and forth dialogue where you can argue and not uh, have any name calling. You can conduct yourself as gentlemen. And I was really excited. Uh, and I was like, I can't wait for that to happen. I'm going to have some something great for him when it's time for me because I wanted to keep it going. But uh, nothing happened. I think I might have did... Uh, might have done too good of a job because Federico never came back with another video. That was unfortunate, but I still have what I was planning on uh, bringing to him, bringing to the table, and I wanted to uh, bring that to you. And I have a clip from an individual who purchased a Braemont. He didn't purchase the uh, 1918, but he owns a Braemont, and uh, I think that would bring some light into what kind of person purchases a Brema. Um, for the setting of this, uh, the gentleman's name is Drake, and Drake and I have uh, met each other before at Little Treasury. When we have Little, Little Treasury has events a lot of times, and this event was the English tour. The English tour was, a again, a Brema event with Little Treasury, and we got to meet Nick and Giles from Brahma. Uh, in that, in this clip, you're going to see Drake. Let me see a piece. Not all of this uh, watches in his collection, but a piece of his collection. And uh, I was very, very impressed and happy to see what kind of person purchases a Brahma. All right, let's go ahead and watch that video. This is Drake's collection. Unfortunately, due to the bad audio, I can't give the exact presentation how he gave it, and it was very well done. But anyway, uh, starting off, this, of course, is Drake's Braemont, the Braemont two, Boeing 247 in a titanium case and bracelet. It is a GMT chronograph. He explained that this is not the original bracelet, but taken from a Braemont Terra Nova. He's partial to uh, bracelets. Here is his Omega Speedmaster Gray Side of the Moon, my personal favorite of all Speedmasters. He explained that the, he had the, his theme of Anne, which is common from around pretty much most of his watches, is the color gray, and which is represented not only in the namesake, but in this gray ceramic case. One of this watch's attributes it, that Drake pointed out was this deployant clasp. I, I really like that part. Now, 
here is his two-toned steel yellow gold Rolex Daytona. Drake is no rookie to watch collecting, and he pointed out that Rolex has been, been doing bimetal watches since the 30s, and the, this look is not exclusive to the 1980s. Furthermore, according to Drake, most people purchase flagship watches for wrist presents. And he said, if you're going to do that, if you're going to go loud, forget the polished stainless steel, go with the gold, the yellow gold. I don't know if I agree with that, but I do like his passion. Lastly is the Blanc Palm 50 Fathoms Bathyscape Chronograph. I had to quote Drake on this one. He called this watch a bad mama jamma. This watch is a flyback chronograph with a high beat movement similar to the Zenith and Grand Seiko. It has a water resistance of 300 meters, including the pushers. This is an exception to the rule. Along with 300 meters of water resistance, exhibition case back something you just don't see and all this at the height of 15 millimeters a lot of uh chronograph diver watches are much much thicker than this and ad additional features are the bezel that has the same liquid metal technology of contemporary omega divers uh, blanc pond and omega are part of the same parent company the swatch group and the hands according to drake has the loom brighter than any watch he's ever dealt with including the Seiko Turtle. Drake really gushed upon this watch, and I could tell this was his favorite in his collection. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of person who owns a Braemont. Does this person look like the kind of person who is a sucker for cool marketing? Or maybe this is a person who truly understands and loves watch collecting. I don't know. You be the judge. Thank you, Drake, for allowing me to uh, experience such a nice collection, a beautiful collection, a well put together collection. Of course, I would like to see some color, but that's his thing. He likes the gray. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Charles Wallingford, and any one of Drake's watches will be how I would spend my money.